everyone to another episode. This is your important accountant, Marie Mejia. And I am uh, the panastic business coach, uh, David Pataki. So glad to be here. And we are, what, uh, a couple of days before Christmas, Maria? Yeah, we kind of missed our normal recording uh, schedule time. So this is the week of Christmas. So it'll be fun. <laughs> To get in the festive spirit, I am wearing a Christmas Spider-Man sweater. Yeah, I like myself. Sweater I have. <laughs> the only festive sweater. Well, that's good. You uh, you have one more festive sweater than myself. Well, that is very interesting. My husband has a matching one, so. Nice. So together. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, we're not able to uh, be side by side schedules. We're, we're not in line today, but uh, we're doing this uh, over the internet here. This is going to be fantastic. Looking forward to what are we going to talk about today? Well, actually, before that, Marie, we, <clears throat> well, wait, what's going on? It's Christmas time? Oh, no. Yeah, it's Christmas time. We got our tree up. We got our presents under the tree. We do um, uh, Christmas bags. So, you know, we have cloth bags that we put our Christmas presents in. So those are under the tree. Nice. Like, are, are they like pillowcase or are they specific? No, Christmas they are bags? specifically for Christmas. They're they're not pillowcase. We're not ghetto like that. No. <laughs> I, I sewed I sewed these bags with love. You did well. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, maybe yeah. I'll post it up on our uh, on our page, our Facebook page. I think that'd be a fantastic idea. Uh, for myself, yeah, just uh, just normal uh, Christmas, nothing too too special by end. Uh, just looking forward to uh, the downtime with the with the kids and the family. So that's awesome. Spend that time with the fam. Exactly. Yeah, you know, downtime is always a good thing. Awesome. So should we just jump right in? Why don't you know, Maria? I got an idea. Why don't you oh. and I just jump right into this? Oh my gosh, that's a brilliant idea. And you know what I was thinking? Maybe we should, so previously, you know, we, we talked about, you know, joint ventures and how to price things and things like that. But I kind of want to focus and hone in on the importance of having an upsell or downsell, or sometimes we call it a cross sell because, you know, we're, we're silly like that. But like, why would, well, first off, like, what is an upsell? What's a downsell? And why is it important? That, uh, <laughs> that question, question yes, that question sounds, uh, you know, on the, on the outside looking in, seems like a very simple question, but uh, it's actually uh, a pretty loaded question. So why don't we just start with, uh, with the, defining them? So a downsell, is something that you offer to a client that isn't, or a prospect, sorry, that um, is interested in, you know, as a qualified prospect, but isn't ready to buy your um, regular product. So usually a downsell is either something of uh, lower quantity, perhaps um, maybe even a lower quality, if, if that fits into the into the scenario, or if it's a service, it's um, it's a may not a, it's a scaled back service uh, so in an upsell is is, when, is a an offering that you give a prospect when they're ready to buy uh, and that's a key thing you know the upsell comes in when you are when, when they're ready to buy right so the up, upsell is something that that you're offering which is the product uh, but it's either a better quality product or more quantity of that product or the service, there, there's added services to it and so on. And the cross sell, uh, we'll touch on this uh, right now, but uh, you know, maybe a little bit later on, we'll get into it as well. But a cross sell, it would be some, would be a product or service that is um, related to what you're selling the, the, the client right, or the prospect at the moment, but isn't, isn't the upsell or the downsell. So when you think about upsell and cross-sell, the easiest thing to think about is that upsell with the McDonald's or you know fast food place is that you order a burger and they say, would you like to make that into a meal? So you're getting the fries and the drink along. So that's an upsell. And a cross-sell would be, would you like dessert with that? 
hamburger. That would be a cross sell. And I guess a down sell, if you want to go in that scenario, you know, if they're going to go with, uh, you know, we use McDonald's, for example, they, they, they're looking at a Big Mac, but they're not ready to buy the Big Mac. So you can offer them the hamburger. It's, uh, you know, it's a lesser priced product. Uh, so it's easier for the prospect to, to engage with you in that respect. Now, the main reason, so now that we've explained that, the main reason for the downsell, why this is so extremely important, is that you are driving uh, leads to you, right? So that prospect has come to you and that you've given them, uh, you've offered them something. So it's very valuable to continue a relationship with the prospect. So if they're not willing to buy the product that you're offering at the moment, if you have a downsell already set up, already figured out, and remember, it can't be, you know, a, a downsell that, that isn't related to the product, right? You've got the Big Mac down to the hamburger, right? It's now a burger, but it's a lesser uh, burger, right? You don't want to say, oh, you know, you, you don't want the hamburger. What well, do you want an apple pie? Th 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 those aren't related, right? But the idea of the, of the downsell is so that you can gain them as a client. If you can earn the right to do business with them, you now have the opportunity in the future to uh, engage in them and see if they'd be willing to buy the regular offer or even to upsell to a, to a better product down the road. But if you can't get, if you, if you aren't able to connect with them with the with a proper downsell, then you will lose that prospect and you may never have an opportunity to connect with them again. True. So when it comes to downsell, should people be advertising that downsell to their prospective clients or should that kind of be kept in your back pocket when you to bring out for when you do like the, the discovery calls and things like that? Awesome question, Maria. Thank you. Yeah, no, that's definitely a, a back pocket um, scenario, but it isn't a make, make it up on the fly back pocket scenario here, right? This is something that you need to strategize. You need to sit down, whoever it is, you know, like if, if, if you know, if it's just yourself, then, then obviously you should sort of talk about it with somebody else or figure out what, it, what is it that your prospects want? You know, it's kind of funny, you know, it always kind of come back to the prospect, right? Who your target market is, what their pain points are, and what they want. You know, it's funny that it keeps coming up over and over again. But the more you understand this, the more that you can are able to, to be able to serve the pain points of your prospects, the more uh, successful you're going to be. So when you're setting up your, your pricing, you go, okay, you know what? I'm selling this product. You know, let's go back to the landscaper again, right? So typically you're going to go, okay, well, I'm going to, my offering is going to be, we're going to, we're going to mow the lawn. We're going to weed, the, we're going to um, trim the weeds or, you know, do the lawn trimming around there. And we're going to sweep up everything. And let's say we're also going to trim the bushes. So that is your standard offering. So you figure that out and you make sure you price it accordingly. Because again, we always want to be profitable. You don't want to gouge anybody, but you also don't want to be unprofitable because then you're not going to be in business for very long. So you figure out your, your, your initial offering and then go, okay, well, if that isn't, uh, if they're not ready for that commitment yet, what can I offer at a lower value or lower price point that still shows the, the value that I can offer them? So your downsell could be, okay, well, you know, you're doing $120 for the whole package, but you go, well, for $80, I could do the the lawn and the edge trimming, right? You could take out the sweeping and the, and the bush trimming. But if you have that in your back pocket, again, you're not scrambling. You're not, you already know the proper price point for it. So you're not just coming up, you know, guessing, you know, just to get the client. So it, it's something that needs to be planned along with the upsell, right? Like, like when you're pricing your products or services, you, you should look at, okay, so here's, here is our, my middle point. You have the downsell, which you keep in your back pocket, like you said, Maria, and then you have the upsell. The upsell is something that you could advertise in the beginning. Uh, another scenario that you could do is you could start with the upsell 
and then the upsells part of it, and then you, if the downsell can be to your regular level. But I would sell how um, the downsell downsell scenario, so that because again, every time you have a prospect, you want to earn their business. Yep. So obviously, if a uh, if a prospect is coming to you, that means that they are willing to buy, and they probably have an idea of how much they're wanting to spend. So having that downsell in your back pocket, um, you know, gives you that option to grab that client if they're not ready for your full, your normal package. But at the same time, you have to be willing to do the service in your downsell and make sure that it's not too big of a loss, if at any. Um, obviously, with every service that you do, you want to be making a profit. So make sure that, you know, the downsell isn't just the same as everyone else because you still want to be unique um like david said with the lawn mowing you know it's lawn mowing plus the edge trimming you know it's possible that not all the businesses do the edge trimming so having a little extra than everyone else in your down sell still makes you unique and um or maybe that price will be you know makes more sense to your prospect and things like that absolutely like you know we'll take uh, the floors for example if you are, uh, if you sell your uh, dozen roses, your really nice long stem do do dozen roses for, for $50 for, for 12, you know, and when someone comes in, they're looking at, you know, trying to impress somebody, you know, maybe it's a partner <laughs> who made a little oops and uh, wants to make good on that. Um, and they walk in there and it's, it's, a, it's a $50 uh, price point and you go, oh, I'm not ready for that, you know. And if, if you aren't able, if you don't have that back pocket, if you don't have that offering in the back pocket of something that looks just as good or is comparable to the roses, but maybe at half the price, again, I'm not saying that you discount it 50%. You, you, you know, maybe there's a, a carnation bouquet or some other type of flower arrangement that can look just as good or almost as good as the, the dozen uh, long stem roses but if you can have that right there prepared so when they come in and go okay you know what i'm looking at the dozen roses you go okay that's great you know we have these wonderful uh bouquets here it's fifty dollars and then the and the prospect goes oh that's ah, i'm not really really ready for that but if you can come back and go well you know what i understand where you're coming from i have this awesome um other bouquet you know, with these other flowers and I can arrange it in such a way that it, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty much the same looking as the roses and it's only $25. And then they go, oh, that's great. Boom, uh, that down sell happens, right? And if you just do that, you know, once a day, right? That's 125 bucks a week. If that happens, you know, that's, uh, that's 500 bucks a month. Right, that's three thousand dollars a year. If it's five days a week, it's three thousand dollars a year of additional revenue. If you didn't have that down sell all ready to go, mm -hmm. yeah, you're picking up all those extra people who are still in that uh, the buyer's journey. They're not quite ready for you know the big the big stuff that you give. You know, they're ready for just a little taste of what you have to offer. All right, and and again, like. You know, maybe this week they they twenty five dollars is their budget, but you know because you help them out, you know a month or two months down the road when there's an anniversary or a birthday party or something, they're going to think of you. So now you've gained that opportunity to do business with them again in the future because you were able to satisfy their need at the at the initial time. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to uh, you know we have talked a little bit about you know the products with the. Um the florists and a little bit about the service with the lawnmowers, but uh, what about people in more, you know, in the business services type things like the IT, so the business coaches, the accountants, um, those kind of professional services, how can we use an upsell to our advantage? Like what could we, what could we be thinking of in the back of our heads to be like, okay, this person is ready for an upsell or this person is, not ready for my normal they're ready for a down so like what could be kind of like a triggering to let us know which way that we should be going uh, 
Great question. Uh, it was kind of a, a multi-level question there. Uh, well, when it comes to knowing, you know, you know, especially in the business services, what can be part of an upsell, it just goes back to what type of products, and you know, and I think an upsell needs to be a strategy that everyone isn't employs right off, right off the get-go. Again, it needs to be something you identify the needs, right? Like for example, if it's an IT person and they're going, okay, most people, they just want some uh, virus control or um, fire firewalls and a little bit of, uh, you know, maybe email storage or cloud storage and so on, right? You know, maybe that's what uh, most people are asking for. But is there, um, there's ID protect, there's uh, other security measures that you get in place. There is um, uh, other levels of security. Uh, I'm not an IT person, but if you, if you sit down and look at what it is that the, the clients want, but maybe, because a lot of times, well, here's the interesting thing, especially when it comes to business coaching and, and business services like that. People don't necessarily know what they need, right? They know what they want. You know, they typically want the, um, I'm going to use the quote here, if you, air quotes, if, if you're just listening to this on the podcast, but uh, the sexy stuff, right? It's the stuff that um, the buzzword and in, in the things that people are talking about, uh, you know, you get the the Facebook people with the uh, with their campaigns, their ad words, or their their promises that they could bring you, you know, they could triple your your leads and so on and so forth. But the, but the, the bottom line is, yeah, maybe that Facebook, for example, can bring you a thousand leads a month. But if you don't have a proper offer in place, if you don't know how to convert those thousand leads. If you don't have a downsell in place or a cross sell or an upsell in place, those thousand leads are basically a waste of time, right? Maybe one or two, you know, maybe you're able to um, increase your conversion by a couple of percentages. But if you haven't figured out the proper offer, like I said, in the downsell and the upsell and the cross sell, you're missing out on so much more revenue. And that's really what you need in that scenario. You know, the, the, the sexy thing is, is the Facebook leads. But what you actually need is perhaps you're getting 300 leads right now, but you're only converting, you know, 5% of those leads, right? So you don't necessarily have a lead problem. You have a conversion problem. So then we got to sit down and figure out, well, why, why aren't you able to convert those people? Right? Is it because the offer's not right? Is your, you know, did your land? Do you even have a landing page? Does it go to a, a really boring, you know, homepage that doesn't that, that doesn't uh, offer them any value and, and value? And in this case, would be information to help them along the buyer's journey, as you had mentioned earlier, Maria. So it, it's trying to understand what it is that they need, right? And obviously. The pain point, understanding your customers um, to the best, you know, to the greatest detail as you can. You know, I, you know as a business coach, I've spent years in, in business. I've, I've gone through all this. I know uh, I've made all these types of mistakes. But I've spent years, you know, the past number of years learning, you know, how to be, what strategies are more effective and what do I actually need to do in a business as opposed to what do I want in a business? And because I understand it that well, when the time comes and I'm meeting with a client, a prospective client, I'm able to help them understand what it is that they want. I can hear that and typically I already know what they want, but I'm also able to, to, to deliver or offer what they need so that they can actually up their revenue. You know, in a lot of cases, uh, you know, obviously there's fees when it comes to coaching, you know, in, in, you know for, for myself and in all the other coaches out there, but I can typically show you the return on that investment and it turns out to be more an investment and not even a cost because at the end of the day, I'm able to, able to help with the revenue side of things that that increased revenue covers the, the coaching fees. So it's really not a cost. It's really a, a return on investment. But the long, the long and short of it is you need to know, you need to understand what it is that's going to help your clients. 
and have that in your uh, uh, in in your in your toolkit on your tool belt. You have to be able to understand that you know this client is going to typically this client of this size is going to need this. And they might come to you and say, you know, I just don't, I just don't want to, I just don't want to be hacked, right? Or you know, I don't need, maybe they don't even think about that, right? But you know, like one of one of the client, one of my clients is, is an IT person, in, you know, or, or or company. We're talking about this, and the cost of being hacked is or being down isn't just you know a few hours of someone's time, right? It's your reputation, right? You could lose clients from that. Uh, you're down. Uh, your, your, your clients can't access you. You could be losing sales. You've got staff working on it. You've got an IT person fixing the, fixing the issue. So any kind of downtime, any kind of um, data breach could cost you between, you know, easily $1,000 to begin with up to 10 to 20 to $30,000, depending on the size of your business. But if it affects your reputation, if you're a medical center or someone that has a lot of personal data, if that gets breached, you may actually not be able to recover from that. So to be, as an IT support or consultant, you know that. So you're, what you need to do is be able to show, show the, the, the need for that. Again, they, don't want, they may not want it, but they probably, or they do need it, whether they see the value in it. <clears throat> That's where the positioning comes in, being able to show the value. Uh, pretty long-winded, you know, <laughs> bit of a rabbit hole there. So uh, did I answer your question there, Maria? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, just to highlight a few points that you, you said there is, you know, understand your business, know what services you can offer, but also understand the business and the need of your clients, your potential clients, your current clients. And know that, you know, they might come to you and say, I need X, Y, Z. But since you are so, you're knowledgeable, you're a leader in your industry and you're a leader in their industry as well. You know that they need not only X, Y, Z, but, you know, the first half of the alphabet, A, B, and C as well. Um, and that, that being your upsell, um, if it's not already in your current normal package. Good well said, well said. It's a good summary. <laughs> Yeah, great team. I appreciate you uh, on the other end there, Maria. You know it. Um, well, is there anything else you want to add about upsell, downsell? I kind of feel like it's a nursery rhyme, upsell, downsell, cross-sell. <laughs> well, you know, it's, uh, I think, so the, the we, you know, we started this by saying the importance. So just uh, just the, uh, you know, one last, or the, uh, the point to, to take away from all this is that, you want to be successful. In order to be successful, you need to be able to convert on, on your leads. And the, you know, one of the best strategies to be able to convert is to have a downsell, a proper downsell in place. Again, it needs to be a profitable downsell. Uh, it can't be just discounting your product because discounting um, takes away 100% of your profit. Uh, so make sure that down, it's a proper downsell right, to, to continue to get the, the close the prospects, and then have an upsell. Because typically an upsell is set up where you're bringing more value, but typically it also is a higher profit margin uh, offering. And again, you, you wanna make sure that you are being profitable. And then the, the cross-sell, we didn't really touch too much on the cross-sell. Uh, you know, well, why don't we leave the cross-sell for, for a different time? It's, it's a little bit of a different animal, but, uh, so let's just say, so being profitable, making sure you understand the pricing of your main product, your initial offering, have your upsell set up and your downsell set up, you know, usually hopefully before you go to market, but if you're, you know, for all those people out there right now that are, that are, uh, you know, been in business for a number of years, you know what, great time of the year, sit back, you know, over between Christmas and New Year's and go, okay, let's, let's revisit the pricing. Can I, uh, what can I offer as a downsell? And what can I offer as, as an upsell? So that is the homework, if we should throw it out there. Uh, you know, we haven't done this before, but all we have, we say, you know, if you write it down, you become part of the 5% club. Uh, but I'm gonna throw out there, uh, you know, just uh, 
take a piece of paper, and yes, old school technology, or take a piece of paper and a pen, and I want you to write down what it is you're, you're offering right now, what can you offer as a downsell, a profitable downsell, and what can you offer as an upsell, and make sure it's got lots of value, uh, and you can have the profit margins uh, go up uh, accordingly. Yep. Well, thank you for that wealth of knowledge, David. I've definitely learned something myself as well. It's reinforced everything that you keep preaching every single day. <laughs> so uh, remember to like us, subscribe. Well, obviously, you know, like us as people, but like us as a podcast, um, also on YouTube. Subscribe, um, follow us. I don't, I don't know. David's much better. Oh, at <laughs> oh no, you're, you're awesome too. But anyways, yeah, just comment any questions you want us to deal with. Uh, you know, do you agree? Do you disagree? Uh, something you want us to touch on in the future? Please, we, we look forward to that. Um, you know, and share. And hopefully, uh, you know, if we if you haven't learned anything, hopefully you've laughed at least once. <laughs> yep, that'll be good. So we'll see you all uh, next time on our next podcast. Next all right. episode. Have a good Cheers. one. Bye.